everybody. Welcome to the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from Ontario, Canada. Today is Tuesday, December the 22nd, 2020. I would first like to start off by welcoming any new viewers who may be tuning in for the very first time. Welcome. And to all my returning viewers, welcome back. This is a podcast mostly about my knitting and crochet journeys. Um, I love anything fiber related and hopefully in the coming new year there might be some new things. So yeah, so if that's your kind of thing, this is a podcast for you. Um, you can find me on the internet as uh, xcountrygirl1986x over on Ravelry. And you can also find me on Instagram as Inspired Knitting Podcast. All that is linked below in uh, the description box. And that's where you can find uh, detailed show notes as well. So I always link to uh, the designers that I speak about. So that's where you can find it. So yeah, um, December 22nd, we are a few days away from uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas very crazy how fast the year is gone. I say that every year, but it's true. Uh, the year just seems to fly by. And um, this year is a little bit more challenging than most because of everything that's going on in the world. Um, here in Ontario, we just uh, got informed yesterday that on it was supposed to be Christmas Eve, but the government moved it up to Boxing Day, so December 26th we are going into full lockdown. So there are regions in the Toronto area that have already been in lockdown uh, for uh, several weeks now, I believe. Um, but now all regions um, here in the south uh, part of Ontario will be going into full lockdown mode. So yeah. Um, so I guess we're gonna, we already celebrated Christmas a little bit uh, with uh, Kaylee, hi Kaylee, uh, and her boyfriend, and on Christmas, uh, we're still debating whether or not Christmas is happening at uh, our family's house. It's a big family, so we're not sure if we're gonna go and do that yet because, you know, nobody has uh, COVID, but that's not the point. We, we just don't know what's going on. So um, yeah, it's a challenging time. And I hope that uh, everybody has a happy one. And even if you can't spend it with uh, your family, there's still uh, there's still ways to connect. So that's the beauty of the internet these days, I suppose. But I just hope you all have a, a good one and a safe one and a happy one. Because at the end of the day, as long as we're all here, that's what matters, right? So anyways, enough don't want no depression or anything but yeah so I got quite a full show to uh, share with you guys today because it's been several weeks since I podcasted of course so um, I'm gonna get right into it because I have a few finished objects I want to share with you so I got my Tim Hortons coffee to keep me going so let's get started. First things first, I am going to share um, a Christmas gift that I received in the mail from my best friend, Shelby. Um, she sent me a beautiful little package. We, we sent ours out, I think the beginning of December, and I told her, I was like, you do not have to wait to open it. I want you to open it. So we did it on uh, video chat and it was amazing. Not the same. I wish I was there to spend it with you and Laura Shell, but yeah. Anyways, um, I got an amazing knitted vest from Shelby. Um, and yes, I, I weaved in, I did weave in half of the ends. <laughs> There's just some that, uh, I kind of just tucked in there for now. Shelby knows how much I love weaving in ends, so thank you for that, Shelby. I really do. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Holiday Vest by Petite Knits, and uh, Shelby did it in uh, Burnett Chunky, and it is 
so amazing and it is so warm. I love it. I was going to wear it. I actually had it on, but it is so warm sitting in front of this window that I had to take it off. So anyways, I'm glad I did because I'm able to share it a little bit better. But it's just a stockinette and it's got this beautiful um, one by one ribbing on the bottom. And same as your your sleeve uh, inserts. It's just amazing and it's really nice. And it's super warm to wear out on those cold days, which is perfect because we've actually had a mild streak here the last uh, couple days, but last week it was pretty brutal out there. So I was very happy to ha throw this on under my jacket and it protected me from the, the elements. So thank you so much, Shelby. I adore it. Isn't having uh, best friends that are knitters just the most awesome thing in the world? You get handmade, handmade gifts. You don't even have to knit them. I love it. So that was uh, the Holiday Best by Petite Knit. That was uh, knit by my best friend Shelby. So uh, the next thing I'm going to share with you guys is a hat that I finished and if you follow me on Instagram you would have already seen it but I finished my Niet hat by Cozy Up Knits and if you are a follower of Cozy Up Knits you know that uh, in the springtime I believe it was they released the Miet shawl which is a three uh, three skein DK weight shawl and it has um, this beautiful pattern in it so I had to um, I had to get the hat I did start to knit the shawl but it got lost in the uh, the fire so I have to knit another one I I think I know what I'm gonna use I have a beautiful green um, by biscotti biscotti yarns and I got three skeins of it it's DK uh, this the pattern was written with three different colors but I have seen variations of it where it's just knit, knit, knitted in a plain solid color so I think that's what I want to do I'm not sure yet um, but yeah I have this beautiful pom-pom and I love this pom-pom it's actually a snap-on one which I really like that because um, I have multiple ones that uh, have the snap so if you don't like this pretty pink floof ball then you can just change it off for something different and you can also take it off when you want to wash it so that's awesome sadly though <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure if it was my gauge or I missed a repeat somehow I am not sure exactly what happened it does fit on my head. I, I'll put it on quick. It does fit on my head, but it's just, it's just a little short. You can see that my ears, I like my ears covered. So not exactly sure what happened there, but yeah. So I, I have been thinking about it. I love this hat so much. Um, did I bring the ball band? So this is my first time working with this yarn. It's uh, Dye Gilpin, and there's the tag. It's 100% uh, Scottish lamb's wool. They come in 50 gram skeins, and it's 175 meters of ball. And this is, um, this is a sport weight or a DK? It's a DK. And the colorway is 806 or Bell Heather. So there you go. So absolutely beautiful yarn. Like I said, it's the first time working with it. I have heard uh, Maria and Bruna of the Toronto's Knitter, the Knitting Loft in Toronto. Sorry. Uh, they have a podcast here on uh, YouTube as well. So do check them out. They are a mother-daughter team and they are amazing. I love them. 
they have a shop in uh, Toronto and it it is amazing it's like a, a yarn it's a dream world for yarn lovers it just looks amazing and I want to go one day so yeah um, Bruna is always talking about Di Gilpin and um, she has recently been knitting a um, a cabled sweater and the stiff stitch definition is just amazing on it so I had to get a ball just to try it and I can see why she loves it so much because it's got that rustic feel to it but it's still amazingly soft and yeah you can just tell that sti stitch definition is amazing so I love it I highly recommend it and I the drape on it is amazing so if you wanted to knit a sweater this would make an amazing sweater so yeah sadly um, I know I could just take this hat apart and add another repeat to it but I have a child in my life that loves pink and yeah I think this hat's just gonna go to her for Christmas because it would be perfect so yeah but um, yeah that is the Miette hat by Cozy Up Knits and I highly recommend that as well the hat and the shawl so that is one thing that is definitely on my to-do list I want the hat and the shawl because I love it so okay so the next thing I have to share with you guys is one that I have been wanting off the needles for a very long time and I managed it it is my throw over it is all done, washed, blocked. It just dried today. Today was day four. <laughs> I, yeah. So it took a while. It's a pretty heavy sweater, so it's understandable. I weaved in all the ends except for my color work section. It's the only thing I haven't done yet. But here it is. I do hope that I'll be able to show it properly. But... It is just incredible. I love it so much. I actually wore it on those super cold days unblocked. The color work was, you know, kind of puckered on it, but I didn't even care. I just wanted to wear it because it was so soft and amazing. But yeah, and I have to fix like the, um, the armholes here. Like those ends aren't put in yet. That's not the patterns fault or anything that's just me having to weave in my ends still but yeah there it is I love it so much this is the throw over by Andrea Mowry and I talked about the colors before but I'll just go over it again my main body so the dark charcoal is Cascade Eco Plus it comes in these great big uh, skeins they're like 400 and 400 and some yards it's I it don't it might be around 450 I can't remember now but they're pretty big balls it it's more of a, a heavy worsted but I didn't care I wanted it big and warm kind of like a jacket I do have a big parka but when going out in the vehicle to transfer um, in a big jacket is clumbersome so it's like going up near your face and that and I don't want to fall while transferring so I always wear a hoodie so this is going to be perfect on those cold days I can layer underneath it and it's going to keep me warm but uh, anyways so Cascade Eco Plus my color work the white and this beautiful burgundy are Cascade Eco Plus hemp and then this beautiful purple in here is um, Midnight Cravings in the Daydreamer colorway. So the white and the burgundy Cascade are, I would say they're more of a sport weight because they're pretty thin. And the Daydreamer by Midnight Cravings was a fingering. So I just held all three of my contrast colors here double. And that gave me the right thickness. So yeah. Next podcast, I'll probably wear it, but it is amazing. 
highly recommend the pattern and yeah I think I did the the fourth size I ended up going up uh, a size in the bust area so on the color work section here I ended up going uh, up a size just because I know that my tension with color work is a bit tighter um, I don't think I had to do that, to be quite honest. I put the sweater on and I have lots of give. So if I was to ever knit this again, um, I might actually go down a size, I think. Or just do the same size but not go up for the color work. But yeah, sometimes I always go up because, you know, your tension with color work can be tighter. But it worked out perfectly regardless, so yeah. Andrea Mowry does have the throw back, which it, it does have the same color work design, but uh, it's in a cardigan, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm tempted because I really love this. It was the kind of color work that you just wanted to keep knitting at. Um, you just wanted to go on to the next section and the next section. It was so much fun and it's super easy to do. It was not hard. Um, you're, you are working two colors at once, not all three. So it's not co hard color work at all. So yeah, it was pretty awesome and it was pretty fun. So I highly recommend that one. So, um, the next thing I'm just looking at my show notes so I don't get too far ahead. Okay. So the next thing that I have to share with you guys is a pair of socks and I just finished these recently just the other day as a matter of fact and they're still a bit wet because I washed and blocked them um, one of my uh, neighbors in my building uh, wanted me to knit her two pairs of socks so I knit her um, a fingering weight pair in white I am blocking on the name. It's a Pippin Pin um, Bear Mountain, Bear Mountain sock. So it was a beautiful cabled pattern and she loves them. She already got them. And she asked if she could try a thicker pair of socks as house socks. So I, um, I did that for her. So I used Lion Brand Woolies and I just used one skein and it knit me two socks and I still have plenty of leftovers and it's just like a like a cream color off white so I will put this down so I can show you try to hang it up back here without dropping it there we go so this is uh, one of my own patterns I just cast it on uh, 40 stitches, I believe, on a 375 millimeter needle. I did a 2x2 two two rib for the cuff. And then I just did a, like a mock cable on the sides here, or a little twist, and just a simple cable down the front. And then I did a heel flap and gusset and just a rounded toe so pretty simple <coughs> excuse me pretty simple um i don't know if i'm going to uh write the pattern up i did jot it down in my notebook so i don't know is that something you guys would be interested in um we'll see i have been wanting to uh try my hand at designs uh, designing so we'll see but yeah there's her completed socks <coughs> okay I'm back again sorry about all the distractions today um, so yeah the next thing I'm going to share with you is another new cast on yeah I could not help but uh, cast this uh, this one on um, I follow Lost and Fond on Instagram, Lindsay Fowler. She is an incredible designer. And 
I decided that I wanted to do one of her newer patterns and it is called the Lum Luminera shawl. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so it's a triangle shawl and it's kind of got that plaid look to it and it's not hard at all to do. Um, you do follow charts, but the way that she has them set up, they are super easy to follow and um, they are color coded as well. So I think um, the way that she has designed it is for your event skeins, uh, event minis. So you, it's technically a two color shawl. So you could just use two colors, one low and one high contrast, um, or you can use um, a background color and use your event minis for the background color. So um, I don't have an event calendar, but I pulled together some yarns that I thought would go well together. So I'm just gonna start off by showing you my colors first. And hopefully I remember the names because I'm not seeing ball bands in here, which ain't surprising. So the main color that I am using is uh, this beautiful skein here. And it's all it's a fingering weight shawl. I'm sorry if I didn't say that. Uh, this is all dyed up. Diane is a local dyer here in Napanee, Ontario, or she's around the Napanee area. And I recently acquired quite a few of her skeins and I love her work. This colorway is called Popcorn. And it is so beautiful. I love it. So that's my background color. And I decided, I, at first I was just going to do a two color shawl, but then I kept looking at Lindsay's um, project picture, the one she did. And I love the pops of color that was in there. So I decided that's what I wanted to do as well. So I really wish I would have put the tags in here. Um, but I did not. Because I cannot remember what the colorway of this one is. Oh, actually, here's one. Okay, so this is another uh, all dyed up. It's a beautiful chocolatey brown. And here is her card. And again, I am sorry uh, that the cards are backwards. Um, Kaylee showed me how to uh, reverse it uh, in editing. So we'll see how smart I am and we'll see if I can actually do it. But here is Diane's card all dyed up. And this one is a Superwash uh, MCN base. So it's 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon, and it's 115 gram skein, 400 yards, and the colorway is Nut Crunch. It is beautiful and it is so soft with the cashmere. So that's my first color. And the second one that I am using is this pretty blue and I did see the tag in here for that one so the blue is Madeline Tosh in the ceremony colorway so it's the Tosh merino light so it is a single ply 100% merino wool two or 420 yards so Madeline Tosh it's in the ceremony colorway So there's that one. And then I I was just going to do those two colors, but I decided to add in this one here. This is, I stole this from my Cozy Memories blanket. It is from my um, Patreon from Hypnotic Yarns. So I don't know what the colorway name is because it's just a specific month that got dyed up. So that is what I have for colors so far. And I love them. They're so pretty. So these are full skeins. 
uh, obviously, so I'm going to have more than enough. I don't know. This was um, a 50 gram skein, and I already put 25 of it into my blanket, so I'm not going to have a lot of it, but that's okay. Whatever happens, happens. Um, if I run out and still want to have a third color, I'll just find something else to put in because it doesn't really matter in the end. It's your shawl, right? So <laughs> now I'll finally share the shawl with you. Uh, so here it is. This is what I have so far. How amazing is that? When I saw it, I just... I had to cast it on immediately because it is just that amazing and it's perfect for this time of year, I find. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, so you can see what I was talking about, about the plaid. This is the proper way it should be as a triangle, but you can see what I mean by the plaid. It's like a, I would say it's like a stranded color work but you're only ever working with the two colors. Actually, it's not stranded uh, color work. It's mosaic because you're slipping. You're not stranding. But yeah, it is incredible. I love it. So I haven't put a ton of love on this one um, because I need to have the pattern, the chart in front of me. And it's simple enough that I can do it while watching a movie. Um, the only thing I would say is when I first looked at the chart, um, when I work with patterns, I'm more of a written instruction kind of person. Um, recently I have been leaning more towards charts. Um, but yeah, it took me a minute just to wrap my brain around, uh, the charts and it didn't help. Um, there's two different charts that you're supposed to follow A and B and it didn't help that, um, I was looking at the wrong chart. But it's, it's simple enough that as you're going, uh, once you get like the first repeat in and you go into your next color, you kind of don't even have to look at the chart. You can tell what you're supposed to be doing. So yeah, it's awesome. And I'll show you the back because I know some people love looking at floats. They are just so pretty. Love it. So yeah, and it's got like a slip stitch uh, spine on it. It is a beautiful pattern and uh, I highly recommend that. Uh, and if you don't know who Lost and Fond is, then you need to go check her out on Instagram. She did have a podcast. I don't know if she's released any episodes of late, but uh, I really enjoyed it. So I hope she does uh, come out with another podcast soon because I, like, I love her work. She's awesome. So I'm just going to put all this stuff back away. So that was the Luminaria shawl by um, Lindsay Fowler or Lost and Fond. So there's that. Um, the next thing I'm going to share with you is another gift knit. So I went to um, Walmart last week to do some uh, Christmas shopping and like one does they have to go through the yarn aisle and yeah I of course saw something I liked so I found this yarn and it is I'm not even gonna pronounce it you guys can uh, can read it and figure it out oh there you go so it's a red heart yarn and I'm not quite sure, but you can see that fluffiness to it. So it's pretty much um, like a heavy worsted yarn or maybe even a chunky. What are they labeling it as? They're labeling, it's a bulky weight yarn. Okay. And it's almost like it's, um, it's acrylic. And it's almost like there's a strand of mohair running through it because of the fluff. So again, the fluff has not fallen off. There's been a few pieces that have uh, come off, but not very much. It comes in a five ounce, uh, five ounce or 141 gram ball, 132 yards. So 
I saw this and they had six balls of pink left and I thought this would be a perfect get, gift knit for a little girl in my life because uh, she has been asking me for months now to knit her something. So I knit her a hat for her birthday, but when I saw this yarn, she's been asking for a blanket. So there was six balls of it. It was almost fate to happen. And I'm just following the pattern that's on the ball band. It is a free pattern by Red Heart and it's called the Braided Cable Knit Throw. And it uses um, a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook or a 6.5 millimeter knitting needle. So that's what I'm doing. I got six balls of it and it's pretty simple. It's, I'm just gonna put the bag back down here before I drop it. Um, I am using, I am actually using a 10 millimeter chagu and let's see here sorry about that guys this is what i have so far and i must say how impressed i am with this yarn it's actually really nice so it starts off with um like a one by one ribbing at the bottom and then it goes up into this garter stitch um, background with these beautiful cables so there's like one, two, three, four, five different uh, cables going across. So yeah, it's pretty incredible. I hope I showed that okay. Um, so if you're because of the garter, this the edges aren't rolling, which is incredible. But something that I decided to do just to make sure that there was no curling, and I have a cat trying to eat the yarn. And I decided to do, slip one stitch on the side of the blanket on each side just to make it look a little bit more uh, finished and ensure that it wasn't going to curl. Garter normally doesn't, but yeah. So I now have one full ball in and I am halfway through the other. And yeah, I'm just working away on it. The cable is super simple. It's just like a simple uh, three forward and three back um, kind of style. It's awesome. I love it. And like I said, I'm impressed by the yarn. It's pretty nice. I have been, uh, this has been my mindless uh, knit of late. And this is like two days worth of work. So it works up super fast, as you can see. So yeah. Will she get it for Christmas? Probably not, but uh, yeah, at least uh, at least it's on the go. It was I started it uh, like three days ago, so I saw the yarn and I was like, yeah, I um, have a little uh, gingerbread man. This was from Winsy and Sassy as well, and he's just on there and. I love it. So I have been working away on that. And I'm going to be honest, you guys, I kind of want um, to get more of that yarn to make a throw for my couch. They have a beautiful dusty purple. And unfortunately, my Walmart only had one ball of it left. But um, yeah, I would love, to, Michael's didn't have any of it at all. I don't know if they carry it. Um, but yeah, I would really love to have a throw myself because it's pretty nice. <laughs> um, but anyways, that is the cabled, uh, sorry, the braided cable knit throw, which is a free pattern by Red Heart. So I've done that and I have one more work in progress to share with you guys. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna share you sh uh, share with you um, a new acquisition that I recently got. I went up to uh, yarn it uh, in Coburg uh, earlier this week. 
no, what's today, Tuesday, last week. Losing track of my days, guys. Um, I have gone to Kathy's shop about four times now, I think. And behind her counter, she has this uh, kind of like a line going across with all these project bags. And they are, I know one of the makers is from Baltimore, Ontario, which is just north of Coburg, not far. And I've been eyeing, I've been eyeing all of the bags. They're all beautiful. But this one in particular, I was eyeing every single time I went in the store. And um, last time I went in, I had to get it because, yeah, I'm dreaming. I was dreaming of it. <laughs> so here is the bag. And you can now see why it is just stunning. I love it. And I mean, come on, it's beautiful. So the maker is Wild Strands and I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but she is a local maker and it is a canvas, um, canvas bag drawstring with these awesome handles. I love that. And inside, it's got the same uh, plain canvas, but I believe she, um, I believe she ice dyed it. This ice dyeing technique that she did on the canvas, which is just gorgeous. I love that. So yeah, I splurged and treated myself uh, to the bag because, yeah, it was incredible. So I think I talked about this on my last episode um, in dream knitting. I have been wanting to do the Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry for several years now. I bought the pattern, um, but I couldn't wrap my brain around everything going on because there's uh, several things going on at once. Uh, so if I'm sure you know what the rose cardigan is, but if you don't, it's um, a reverse stockinette cardigan, and it's got uh, cable detailing that goes down the arms, cabled um, neck band, and it's it's got like a faux seam stitch down the the back of it. So it's knit in quadrants, and you do the front quadrants, you do the back, and then you seam it all together which makes a beautiful dolman style sweater or cardigan. So, and it's faded. You use four skeins of a sport weight yarn in a cohesive fade. So I have been dreaming of doing this sweater a lot lately. And every time I went to my local yarn stores, I was looking at the yarns and I was trying to come up with a fade and I have come up with several fades. I was putting yarns together and I would think I had it and then I was like, no, that's just not what I was thinking of. Finally, I settled on something and yeah, I'm going with it now. No going back. So this is what I have so far. I'll talk about the yarns in a minute. I am started the first quadrant. So here it is. So this is technically uh, the starting of uh, the arm, the front. And you can see the, uh, the beautiful cable detail that's going up the side. So yeah, that's what I got so far. And you can see the fading in there. So I am knitting this on my Chagoos and everybody is different with their gauge. Um, I'm using a 3.5. I believe Andrea uses a 3.75 in the pattern. Maybe even a 4. I don't know. Um, but this is what I, I swatched. I actually swatched. And I am at gauge. And this material I just liked on a 3.5 instead. So that's what I'm doing. So... Another thing, um, the reason why I hadn't casted this sweater on before, I have seen it done in solid colors. So you can knit this in one solid color. You can knit it cheap as well if you do so, depending on the yarn you choose, of course. Um, I wanted to do one that was faded. And 
when you buy Andy dyed yarn, it's not the cheapest. I'm a bigger girl and she has from extra small all the way up to a 4X, I believe, or a 5X. So automatically my brain was going to the bigger sizes and I was like, there's no way that I can afford um, in my budget to make a faded uh, sweater with indie dyed yarn until I watched Maria from the Knitting Loft and she recently did the rose cardigan and she did the small size. And it wasn't until then that I realized that this sweater is meant to be worn with 22 inches of positive ease. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't need to knit a huge size. So sitting in a wheelchair, I don't want something that has excessive positive ease because it's just going to get caught. I can't move around right. Yeah, I don't need that. I want something just a slightly more fitted. I want it to be, I want it to have positive ease, but not a ton. So I decided to cast on the extra small, no, the small, there's the extra small and the small. So I'm doing the small, which is going to give me a 55 inch circumference, I believe, which is more than enough. That's going to give me lots of positive ease. So that makes it more affordable. So that's what I'm doing. So this is what I have started so far. So now I'm going to go over the yarns with you. So the first one I am using is uh, Midnight Cravings. It is in their Harvest colorway, and it is a sport weight yarn. This was beautifully gifted to me. I got two skeins of it from the girls over at Cozy Up Knits. Thank you so much. I love you girls. So I decided I wanted that in my cardigan for sure because I love gold, and it's a perfect memory. So I chose that one. And the next one that I put in is the pink. And this one is Shirley Bryan Yarns, and I'm going between Sport and DK, so yeah. <laughs> um, I'm using the Detour DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino, 225 yards, and it's Childlike Express is the colorway. So isn't her tags awesome? I just love that. And here is the back details. And again, there the, the ball. So it's like a beautiful blush pink. And it I don't think the camera will pick up at all, but can you see that little bit of gold in there? And then there's some darker spots. There's another darker hot pink spot in there. It's, it was perfect. So I got that one. And then for my next color, um, I decided that I was going to put this one in. This is another Shirley Bryan yarn. This one is a, let me see, it's a fingering weight. So it's a Merino Singles, 100% Superwash Merino, 475 yards in the Fowler colorway. So we're pulling out the, the golds and the pinks, but we're coming into the lighter cream and we've got some purple with some darker specks in there. And there's, isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. So we got that one. Now, because this is a fingering, um, I can't hold a double because that will give me more of a worsted. So I have decided that I'm going to hold it double with a strand of white mohair. I've been on and off about this. Um, all of my yarns that are going into this sweater are not going to be with mohair except for this color. And I was like, is that going to be too weird? I don't know yet, but I'm trying to work with what I have. And yeah, I really want this one in there. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to do it. It's my sweater. It, as long as I like it, I don't really care. So I'm going to be double stranding these ones together, which should give me the right gauge. So that's Fowler. And it, both are Shirley, uh, Shirley Bryan yarns, but you can see she changed up her tags. And I honestly couldn't tell you which one's the new and the old. 
but she is a local dyer here in Ontario, I believe. But yeah, they're both Shirley Bryan. And then my last color, um, my fourth color that'll go in after that one is, it is Louise uh, Robert Design. And I'm using her uh, Pure Decay Base which is 90% superwash merino and 10% silk. And this color is uh, Parchman DK, 260 yards. So there's her tag. And I picked this up at Yarnit and Coburg as well. So there you go. And here is just wrap it up it all came apart there is the ball how pretty is that so this will be the back uh the back part of the cardigan so i am i'm pulling out the yellow from that and there's still specks of uh pink in there and there's some green so yeah i think it's going to be incredible I don't have the easiest time when it comes to fades. I know what I like and I go to put them together and then I start second guessing myself. Yeah, uh, I could have, I guess I could have just bought in a kit, but I decided I, w I wanted to support my local yarn stores and um, I found I like these colors, so I'm going with it. I think it's going to be incredible. So yeah, that is what I have so far. So I am working away slowly on that. And another reason, like I was talking about, because you're working um, in the quadrants and you're doing the cable at the same time, you're doing um, an upper arm increase, you're doing a lower arm decrease, or no, an upper arm increase, a lower arm increase, the cable and the fading at the same time. Um, when you read the pattern, Andrea writes it out amazing, but for my brain, <laughs> it was kind of hard to do at once and you really had to concentrate. And if you messed up, yeah, it just, it just didn't go well. So, um, one of the other things that Maria from the Knitting Loft had pointed out is Andrea updated her pattern and uh, it now comes with uh, charting for the different sizes. So you can follow the charts and it will show you when you're supposed to put your increases in, when you're supposed to do your cable and it's color coded for the four colors. So yeah, <laughs> you can just follow that. I don't even have to look at the instructions. I just follow this chart and I know exactly what I'm supposed to do, when I'm supposed to do it and what my colors it's just incredible andrea is an amazing designer so if you have had your reservations about the rose cardigan just for that reason i do recommend checking it out now because the charts is a game changer it is incredible it's made the cardigan just easy peasy so yeah i am super excited to have that on my needles and I cannot wait for it to be finished, guys. This has been, if I could say there's a cardigan or a sweater out there that's been the dream one, this would have to be it. It's just amazing. So yeah, that's my rose cardigan. So that's it for works in progress. Uh, it's been a pretty long episode, but I will just share a few more things that I uh, got with you guys. So the first thing is a kit that I got from Yarnet and Kohlberg. So Kathy is doing a knit along for January and February. So since we're all in lockdown and it's winter and we don't want to go out anyways, why not have a knit along? So she is giving uh, two different options. First option is Isabel Kramer. You can knit any one of her patterns. Um, there was a sweater that was featured. I can't remember the name of the sweater now. It was a beautiful color work yoke. Um, but you can knit any Isabel Kramer pattern. And if you bought the, 
uh, yarn from her store, she gives you a discount on the yarn for purchasing it from her and you get the pattern as well. So um, the second option was Stephen West. Uh, I believe Stephen West is doing another knit along as well. Um, I like Stephen West work, but I don't, I don't think I've even knit anything of his. It's just off the charts. I think they're gorgeous and beautiful. And I know some people have tamed them down to make them wearable and they are incredible. Um, but I personally have not done anything of his and it makes me slightly nervous to start something of his. Um, so I played it safe. I went with Isabel Kramer, but if you are at all interested, you can follow Yarnit, uh, on Instagram and, um, feel free to join in in the knit along. Um, so yeah, I looked through Isabel's, uh, patterns and she has a lot of amazing patterns. Um, so one that keeps sticking out to me is a girl's best friend shawl. Um, I've had that one on the mind for a while. It's been in my queue. So I decided this is the perfect opportunity to do it. So I chose three yarns from uh, Kathy's shop. So the first one is Madeline Tosh. I love my Mad Tosh. So this is the rose colorway and this is the singles base again. So it's like a pretty, pretty pink, dusty pink. It's gorgeous. The second one that I got to go with it. So it's a three fingering weight shawl, three different colors. Um, so the middle section is more of a lighter color. So I saw this one, which is tail head yarns, who I've actually never heard of. It's um, Alpachin Trail. 65% cotton, 35% nylon. It is a fingering weight, 435 yards. So I didn't realize at first when I added it to my cart uh, that it was cotton. Kathy had messaged me and she's like, it's cotton, but it's actually super, super soft. And she believes it will work and so do I. I think it's just beautiful. So you can see it's a natural base, but we've got these sections of speckle and we are pulling some of the pinks and there's some blue specks in there. It's just beautiful. I love it. Tailhead yarns. So that's my second color. And then my third color, I might be switching out. I'm not sure yet. Um, this is all dyed up again, Diane. And this is on her fingering weight base, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 400 yards. And it is smooth movement, which is a very beautiful purple. So here are the, the three colors together. So that'll be for the girls, a girl's best friend. I did get the pattern with it. Kathy printed it out. I just have it put away in a safe spot so the cats don't get at it or it get damaged. But yeah, you can just search it up on Ravelry. It's a pretty popular pattern. So yeah, um, these two are definitely staying. When I ordered this one, I thought it was brown at first. Um, so I don't know. Um, I might keep the purple or I have um, an order coming in from Cozy Posy Yarn, Yarn Co. Um, she is a local dyer here in Alliston, Ontario. I know a lot of you adore her yarns. I adore her yarns. Her hand dyed is just incredible. She, her yarns touch my soul. They're all dark, they're moody. They're just beautiful. I love her stuff. So she had a shop update last Saturday, I think, and I had it in my calendar and I had to get some. So in that is uh, some brown and I was kind of hoping, I thought this was brown. I kind of want the bottom section of the shawl to be brown. 
I think it would be a little bit more me if it was than purple. So I might be switching the purple out. I don't know yet. But that's what I got from Kathy. So if I don't use this, I'm sure I will find another use for it for sure. So that's something fun to look forward to. I did want to bring it over to show it with you guys, but I didn't. Another fun knit along that I will be doing in January. So January 1st, Cozy Up Knits is hosting their fourth annual shawl knit along, uh, or mystery knit along, I should say. Uh, usually it's a shawl, excuse me. Um, and again, this year it's a shawl, so we don't know what the shape of it's going to be. Um, but you can head over to Rivalry now. Uh, they have the info sheet there so you can purchase the pattern. So all you're going to get is the info sheet on what you need. So um, it is two skeins of DK weight. So you want the same color, preferably a solid or a tonal. And then you want a skein of mohair or fingering. Um, they have mohair. So you can either do a color that is the same solid as your two skeins or you can do a contrast so um i know polka dot creek ginger snap that yarn habit they have several uh kits that are still available for the mystery knit along so you can get an idea of what uh what's what i have decided to use two skeins of cozy posy in her dk base they are like a midnight uh, blue. It has a shade, uh, it's weird. It looks like a midnight blue, but in light, it, it looks purple. It's very unique color, it's beautiful. Uh, to match with that, I have a skein of um, a darker blue mohair. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to use for my make along. So I will be doing two knit alongs for the month of January, which is fine. Um, I have to have variety, you know me. So those will be fun to uh, sink my teeth into and start. So I'm excited about that. Um, I have one more thing to share with you guys. I just got it today. Um, my friend uh, Richard, he is my best friend forever. Um, he gifted he wanted to gift me something uh from my local yarn shop the gray huron um so he got me to pick something out and i did so um i picked out a night shift shawl kit i have i have wanted to do the night shift for a while um but could never get the colors quite right so i saw that uh Karen had um, some night shift uh, kits in her shop. I didn't know if she still had any because uh, there's a lot of curbs like curbside pickup happening in that. So I hadn't been in her shop for a while. So she had messaged me this morning and I was like, do you have any? And she did. She had one left. So Estelle Yarns um, has the night shift uh, kits. And there is uh, four, five different kits or six different kits with different colors. And it uses the Cascade uh, Superwash yarn, so the 220 Superwash Wave. So it gives you that look like the spin cycle does. Andrea Maori is the one that designed the Night Shift shawl. She also got the cowl version as well. And she used spin cycle yarn, so you're you're doing like slip stitches, I believe. So like a mosaic work, but when you use the spin cycle yarn, it's varying your colors. It's very beautiful. So here is my kit that I got. So this is a Christmas gift and I love it. So it's going to be incredible. I hope you guys can see it. I don't really want to take it out of the bag because I might mess it up, but yeah. It is pretty and it's again dark and moody so it's going to be awesome. So yeah, this is uh, option uh, D by Estelle so you can see the 
the tag there. So, oh my God, I am so happy about this. I'm not gonna lie, I wanna cake these up right away and start it, but uh, I'm gonna reserve myself because I have a lot on the go. But yeah, these this will definitely happen soon. So I was thinking um, of just doing the, uh, the cowl version, but I'm not. I'm gonna do the full shawl because yeah, I wanna use up every last bit of this gorgeous yarn. So thank you so much. I love it. So yeah, that's what I got. We don't do um we don't do traditional Christmas here. <laughs> we kind of uh we see something uh we know that the other person will love or enjoy and we just buy it. We buy it and we give it to them and yeah, <laughs> it's it's just what it is. I am terrible at that. I buy gifts for people, uh, whether if it's for Christmas or if it's for birthdays or whatever, and I cannot wait. I have it in my possession. I'm like, I just want to give it to them. I want them to have it. So it is what it is. Uh, for me, Christmas is more about getting together and um, just having that togetherness. It's not about gifts. It's just about spending time together and being together. So, yeah. Um, Miss Sassy, come to say hi. Hey, Sass. You gonna say hi? You gonna say hi? Isn't she sweet? She is growing. She uh, she was so small for uh, the longest while, but she's starting to she's starting to grow. Tissy, hi Tissy. I love her. So Miss Rami is here. She uh she is laying on the couch right now and she's getting her beauty sleep. Yeah. I am super happy. <laughs> um so anyways, um that's all I got to share with you guys today. It's been a super long episode. I do apologize for that. There was a lot of stuff to share. Um but yeah, I will uh, post the show notes below with everything I have spoken about today. Um, you can follow me over on Instagram. That's where I do most of my posting. I have been trying to keep Ravelry updated uh, of late, um, but mostly you'll find me posting over on Instagram. So if you want to check that out, you can. So yeah, until next time, guys, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, and I hope that your 2021 is a lot more better and brighter. So until next time, guys.